Welcome to TacosTheGeeks.com. Justin here, back with more anime reviews. Today, we're going to be reviewing episode two of Police in the Pod. And this episode is entitled Beginner's Luck slash Police Jungle. As always, I give you a brief synopsis. So here we go. Mai continues to learn from her female colleagues what it takes to be a good police officer. This lesson this time involves domestic incidents and how to deduce what's not immediately obvious. So this is going to be taking just um, a little uh, spoiler. I will be spoiling this episode because it does t um, touch on a serious topic such as domestic assault and sexual assault. And also a uh, trigger warning for those who are um, it, who had these type of experiences in the past. And if you suffer from PTSD, this might be an episode you might want to skip. And it's not just because it tackles these issues, but you might kind of be um, offended how they handled these issues. Um, and I'm going to get a little deeper into that um, right now. So the whole premise of this episode is how to deduce or, you know, these type of situations are not easily visible, which is true. Um, I've always had this saying that you never know who's screaming on the inside, you know. So we are introduced to this young female protagonist here, the blonde woman right there, a 16-year-old who has been picked up by the police officers because she's been having comp dates, um, compensated dates, compensated dates. So what basically that means is she's getting paid to have relations with older men, and she's 16 years old. So they pick her up, they interrogate her. You find out that she's been doing this for a while. She has many clients from students, teachers, faculty members, uh, celebrities even. And from there, she and when we're introduced to her, she's very proud of it. She's like so nonchalant about it. She's ran away from home. That's one giveaway right there. She ran away from home and she's been doing this for a while. And you start to realize that maybe something is a little bit off with this situation. And thankfully, Sergeant Fuji, the, being the great detective that she is, already deducts it, so they call the parents, and the parents come, well, the, well, the parent and the stepdad comes, um, and she is, Sergeant Fuji realizes the reaction of this stepdad is a little bit off when he sees the police officers. So she wisely calls and says to the young girl, Hey, you forgot your signature. Come with me to the back. So the girl goes and she's like, okay, um, what would I have to sign? So Fuji gets serious. And now this is when the, this is where I will say some people might be a little offended. Um, well, they'll get offended toward the ending. Because right here, as you see in this scene, the girl breaks down because after Fuji is interrogating and presses her, she says, there's something else you're not telling me. Um, you might need to spell this out. What else is going on? So the girl reveals that every night she is being molested by this guy, you know, the stepdad, while the mom's at work. That's why she runs away. And it's a very brilliant, well-acted, well-written, emotional, heart, um, heartbreaking scene. And you start to feel for the character, and you start to go, okay, so this is the reason why she's acting out. This is, you know, the... This is the reason for everything that's happening right now. We got a reason why this this the sixteen year old girl is like this, and it's a great moment. It's a great um, you cheer for um Sergeant Fuji. And you cheer for her colleagues who realize that Fuji is such a perfectionist she would never ever forget a signature. And that's one thing. That's a great throwaway line. So they knew that something is wrong. So they already picked up on it and. Um, being great detectives that they are, they already integrate. They was already interrogating this, this stepfather guy. So the issue that will have people and issue I had with it was that um, that show doesn't know what type of tone it's trying to go for. And for me personally, after it ends and the guy's arrested, the mom's divorces and things get moved on. We go, okay, so we're going to just continue the story. If they want to do a little witty banter between the police officers, no. What happens is that the girl sends Mai, who was interrogating her, because during the interrogation we find out Mai's a virgin because she's opening up to the girl to try to get her to talk. She sends Mai a condom and a hotel card saying good luck, basically good luck in trying, you know, getting your first time. 
And for me, that kind of just blew the wind out of the sails because you ended this heartbreaking scene, heartbreaking story with a punchline and a joke. And it's just like, yeah, it's like, why? You could this this put this particular episode when they're doing serious crime, I think they need to be serious. And that's what made you under arrest so good is that they had their jokes. They had their situations, but they knew exactly when to be serious. This show right here is still trying to find its tone and balance between comedy and drama. And when you're ta tackling a big issue such as this, it's kind of like just play it straight all the way through. No jokes. If you want to have jokes, you can have a little bit of wincy banter between the colleagues to release tension on off scenes like this. But you didn't allow the emotional scene that you just established to breathe. And I get it that these two episodes, this show can now be viewed as many shorts of interactions about certain crimes because this 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 was like the A story and then it's like the B story. So, some similar to like Hey Arnold. You know how Arnold had one story and then Rugger and and um there was another story after that. So it would have been something like Fruits, like Stoop Kid, and then the next part will be Pigeon Man or something like that. It, it runs on that same format. So this one is like Beginner's Luck and then the other episode, the Beginner's Luck and then Police Jungle. Now in Police Jungle we have another situation dealing with domestic abuse. A woman comes running out and she's like, hey, help me. I'm being abused by this asshole right here. And he we will get to him in a bit. So basically they start to uh, they bring it to the interrogation room. So but now this one is more focusing on the female officers and their fear of men. My says a line that says, you know, dealing with all these sexual and domestic abuse cases is making me start to fear men. And one thing I did like very well done is that Sergeant Fuji just being like, she's really become my favorite character and standout character of this whole uh, show. Sergeant Fuji, it's a throwaway line, but it's a very important throwaway line because they don't explore it anymore after this. She throws it out there and she says, you know, women can also be the assailants. And that right there was just like, Thank you. Thank you for putting out there that anyone can be a victim. But the, through the course of the episode, they start to explore that fear and they use the other police officers, the other men of how they're intimidating to my, because remember in the first episode, they established that this particular department is very intimidating, interrogation department, the, the officers there, they look very intimidating until once again, Sergeant Fuji steps in. They're like, she's like, they're, they're not they're not interrogating they're not intimidating at all they just dress like that because they want to like flex their muscles just like don't even pay attention it's like she literally ethers every guy in there and it's just like and then maki who also she went to all girls school so she's not used to being around men all the time she also has this fear of men and it's 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 hinted and it's explored and but it's not really like i said once again, tension is killed by jokes and a message that they're trying to convey is killed by not knowing what type of tone they're trying to go for. And it all ends up with the guy who's abusing the girl versus into the police office like a lunatic, like a dumbass, and looking for the girl, his girlfriend, and, and saying, hey, where is she? I know you're hiding. So Mai now has to confront this fear of men head on with Maki who also has a fear of men and they're trying to calm him down and he says the mo you know he says misogynistic things that I don't need to talk to you I don't want to talk to you I'm not going to take nothing from no police woman I need a police man I want to talk to a policeman give me a policeman basically being a complete misogynist sexist you know putting women beneath him and you know and, and things like that and it wasn't until once again, Fuji. Fuji is the MVP of this, uh, of, of these two episodes. Sergeant Fuji once again steps in and says, Oh, you wanna you wanna you wanna talk to a man? Well, you know, she's very professional, calms him down and brings him into the interrogation office with the and the guys, of course, being intimidating as hell looking, and he just cowers. He's like, No, 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 I don't want to talk to them. Can I talk to somebody else? And she's like, You don't get to choose. Since you don't want you didn't want to talk to us women, you can talk to these guys here. And it ends with, you know, and it ends on a, uh, a nice heartwarming um, note of, you know, the guys 
you know, approaching my and approaching Maki. He's like, look, I know we might appear intimidating to you, but he's like, look, you're you're one of us. We always got your backs regardless and things like that. And, and you know, it eases their fear a little bit, which uh, I, I thought I thought that ending landed. But I will say episode two, it has a message that it wants to get across, but the constant tone shift and the imbalancing of the tone between comedy and drama kind of ruins what they're trying to go for here. It's still a good show, don't get me wrong, but I'm curious to see what's going to happen if they tackle something serious, uh, something even more serious, such as uh, serial killers or murder. Like, what's going to happen there? Are they going to be like, ha, ha, that guy's dead, you know, or or the murderer is going to be like having like witty banter conversations with my interrogation rooms? Like, yeah, I killed that guy, stabbed him in the face, but you know. I really like turkey or something, you know, something stupid like that. So I'm, I'm, I'm curious. I'm still, I'm gonna recommend this episode so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, it, if once this show finds its footing, because they do have some really good characters here, it's, it's, it's a good show. It's just know what tone and know when you're dealing with certain serious matters and serious crimes. Know when to be a comedy. Know when to be a drama. This episode should have been played straight. Should have been full drama all the way. Um, but that's it. This is Justin from MetacolisTheGeeks.com. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can follow us on Instagram at Instagram at MetacolisTheGeeks. Twitter at MetacolisTheGeeks. Um, Facebook.com slash MetacolisTheGeeks blog. Twitch.tv slash MetacolisTheGeeks. We just started playing Dragon Ball The Legends, which is another PS... Uh, PS1 game and of course most importantly um, if you or just you somebody you know are are being domestically abused especially this is the number for the United States um, you can call 1-800-799-7233 or 1-800-799-SAFE and just know um, on a serious topic note just know that you're not alone um, there is help there is help there is support system out there for you uh, you do not have to do this alone, and uh, be safe. God bless, and thank you for watching. Later days.